And tonight, Columbus, Ohio will pay a record settlement in a deadly police shooting. The city will pay the family of Andre Hill $10 million. Hill was shot last December as he emerged from a garage holding a cell phone. The officer, Adam Coy, was fired and has pleaded not guilty to murder and reckless homicide charges. He, I didn't shoot. Huh? I didn't shoot. I didn't have, I didn't see what he saw. Okay. I gotta figure out what I'm just... We'll, we'll, we'll take care of that, I promise you. We you gotta, we gotta say anything about that right in a second. He was honestly mistaken. He believed in the right hand was a silver revolver versus a round big set of keys. Do your thing, y'all. Have your fun and enjoy yourselves. Life is grand. Peace. Hello, and welcome back to Legal Descent, where we evaluate your constitutional rights before they're taken away. Out of all of the personal liberties we discuss on this channel, the most important is the liberty of life. Our worldview is developed based on the premise that all life is precious and worthy of being protected, which is why we created this channel to shine a light on government behavior that ultimately leads to the reckless and unnecessary loss of life. Today we analyze the body cam footage of officers Adam Coy and Amy Detweiler leading up to the shooting and death of Andre Hill in Columbus, Ohio back in December of 2020. As always, the links to the original videos, case law, statutes, news reports are all located in the description below. An individual called the non-emergency phone line to report that an individual was repeatedly turning a car engine on and off in a neighbor's garage. Officers Coy and Detweiler responded and approached the garage. Neither officer engaged their body cameras until after the shooting, but the cameras do automatically roll back 60 seconds before being activated. This allows us to see the captured video, but it does not record sound during the rollback. So the first part of this video will be without sound. Hands out to the side. Hands out to the side now. Roll to your stomach now. Yeah. I, hey, don't get close. I can't see your fucking hand. Get your hand up from underneath you now. We got a medic coming. Don't move, dude. This is incredibly heartbreaking to watch. Mr. Hill is clearly leaving the garage with an illuminated cell phone in his left hand. While I do understand that Mr. Hill's right hand is obstructed behind the car, that by itself does not grant Officer Coy the legal or moral justification to begin firing. According to Coy's attorney, Coy mistook a set of silver keys which was indeed found on Mr. Hill for a silver revolver. The United States Supreme Court evaluated the question of when does an officer's use of excessive force violate an individual's Fourth Amendment right to be free from unreasonable searches and seizures in Graham versus Connor. The court held that all claims that law enforcement officers have used excessive force deadly or not, in the course of an arrest, investigatory stop, or other seizure of a free citizen should be analyzed under the Fourth Amendment and its reasonableness standard, rather than a substantive due process approach. So what is this reasonableness standard derived from the Fourth Amendment? Determining whether the force used to effect a particular seizure is reasonable under the Fourth Amendment requires a careful balancing of the nature and quality of the intrusion on the individual's Fourth Amendment interests against the countervailing governmental interests at stake. 
Because the test of reasonableness under the Fourth Amendment is not capable of precise definition or mechanical application, however, its proper application requires careful attention to the facts and circumstances of each particular case, including the severity of the crime at issue, whether the suspect poses an immediate threat to the safety of the officers or others, and whether he is actively resisting arrest or attempting to evade arrest by flight. The question is whether the totality of the circumstances justifies a particular sort of seizure. The reasonableness of a particular use of force must be judged from the perspective of a reasonable officer on the scene rather than with the 2020 vision of hindsight. The Fourth Amendment is not violated by an arrest based on probable cause, even though the wrong person is arrested, nor by the mistaken execution of a valid search warrant on the wrong premises. With respect to a claim of excessive force, the same standard of reasonableness at the moment applies. Not every push or shove, even if it may later seem unnecessary in the peace of a judge's chambers, violates the Fourth Amendment. The calculus of reasonableness must embody allowance for the fact that police officers are often forced to make split-second judgments in circumstances that are tense, uncertain, and rapidly evolving about the amount of force that is necessary in a particular situation. The objective reasonableness would ultimately be decided by a jury. The jury has the task to determine if it was reasonable for Coy, in that split second, to assume that the alleged object in Hill's right hand was a weapon. If the answer is yes, then Coy is innocent. If the answer is no, then he is guilty. Further, in our criminal process, all people, including officers, are assumed innocent until proven guilty beyond a reasonable doubt. However, the real question is, how did we even get here? This is one of the consistent issues we witness with law enforcement time and time again, that they automatically assume the worst and believe that all people are up to some type of nefarious act. Remember the basis of the report for why the police are even there. It was a call about someone turning a car on and off. That isn't illegal. That is not dangerous. That is not even suspicious. I really wish we had the audio leading up to this so we knew what was said between Mr. Hill and the officer, but it appears that we will never know. The other issue is that the officers need to use common sense. A man has just been fatally shot, gasping his final breaths on the ground, and he is being given commands to roll over and to show his hands? He can't even breathe, let alone follow your commands, officer. Over 10 minutes pass before any type of medical aid is offered to Mr. Hill. Officer Coy paces around the driveway and vomits repeatedly while waiting for assistance and a medic to arrive on scene. Officer Detweiler also fails to attempt to provide medical assistance to Mr. Hill and other officers begin to arrive. Two, I can get you whatever you want, Bubba. Got it? 
Post them in, keep over them clear for the paddock. I'm gonna throw the wagon back or just go down the other road, okay? You can talk to whoever you want to talk to down there, right? You got your phone with you? Yeah. Okay. I gotta figure out what in this. Huh? We'll, uh, we'll take care of that, I promise you. You don't gotta work, we gotta say anything about that right in a second. This is an unbelievable moment captured on camera. Officer Coy says, I've got to figure out what I missed with the last word trailing off as he realizes that his body camera is recording everything. He gestures at it so that the other officer knows that he does not want to talk about the specifics. This behavior evidences that the officer knows he messed up. A typical reaction of someone who just killed an individual in self-defense would include adamant expressions of, he had a gun, or I saw him with a weapon. Something that would justify his behavior, not, I've gotta figure out what I missed. This implies that the mental state of Officer Coy was already in self-preservation mode. Just now realizing the extreme peril his actions just placed himself in and knowing that he had gone way too far. Officer Coy's vomiting also evidences the extreme amount of pressure his body was enduring at this moment. As nausea and vomiting are common reactions to traumatic situations inflicted upon one's psyche. This could be caused by immense feelings of guilt and realization that he just took a life or could be created by an insurmountable feeling of fear knowing that his future prospects include loss of his job and very likely his freedom. I would also like to point out how the police officers treat themselves significantly different than they do regular citizens. An individual would most definitely have to worry about talking right now and would be pressed into saying something right away. The officer allows Coy to not answer, not pressing him for answers and allowing him to have his space. Further, as we switch to Officer Detweiler's body cam, another officer approaches her to ask if she's all right. Notice her reply. You all right? Yeah. My camera's on. Okay. My camera is on? Why does that matter? Why can you not talk about it? Normally, I understand people wanting to remain silent. Officers have that right too. However, in this case, these are the people who are also in charge of the crime scene, the initial stage of the chain of evidence, and to conduct the preliminary investigation. Obviously, they are not able to be objective. She then walks the officers through the encounter. Do you know where he was at when he shot so we can try to get the casings? Come this way, guys. Come this way. So, about here, I was over here, and he was here. Where is it? So he was right in here. Okay. So, he was here? Yeah, no, he, Adam, I was over there. You were here? Tell me where you were. Over by the house. He, I didn't shoot. Huh? I didn't shoot, I didn't have, I didn't see what he saw. Where was that at? He was here. Adam. You shot? Mm-hmm. 9022 in car 43. See, right here. There's one. There's yeah. one. No? No. Should be. Come out here. Come out here. Mm -hmm. Come here. 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 Come Again, for the initial statement, they request that she turns her body camera off. Why? Why are the public not entitled to know what the instant reaction of this officer is about this shooting? 
Officer Coy has been fired and has been indicted for murder. His trial will take place in the coming months. The family of Andre Hill was compensated a record-breaking $10 million settlement. But as anyone who has lost a loved one will tell you, there is no amount of money in the world that can replace the spark of human life. Officer Coy has been investigated before for excessive force and has had multiple complaints lodged against him for using rude and discourteous language and actions during arrests. This is why we make a big deal out of officer behavior on this channel, because little problems lead to big problems. Excessive force, rude behavior, and small deprivations of liberty now might turn into the most invasive deprivation of liberty later on. What do you all think? Was Officer Coy justified to fire upon Hill? Let us know in the comments below, and we will leave you with the quote from Andre Hill we played in the intro. Do your thing, y'all. Have your fun, and enjoy yourselves. Life is grand. Peace.